I'm 42 years old and I recently ran the London Marathon in 2 hours, 24 minutes and 31 seconds. I've only been running for around three and a half years, so I don't have loads of experience of running. Um, it's only my second marathon. And a lot of people have asked me how I did it, what kind of training I do, and what it takes to run a marathon at that speed at my age. So I thought I'd just lay out how I train. My name's Patrick, and let's get into it. Uh, like I say, I'm 42 years old running for three and a half years and I got into running after a colleague at work was pestering me to do a 10k race. Um, this, is, this is just before the Covid lockdown so at the end of 2019 I thought why not let's just give it a go see what happens. So I trained for a bit before, um, ran 38.27 I think the time was and finished 25th and that really just got me into running, really got me motivated thinking um, no, it's a good time, it's a sub 40 is a good time for a amateur 10k runner. Um, with a little bit of training I got that time so I thought if I can keep on training then perhaps I can run faster and I remember seeing the guy who won the race, I remember him running past me uh, as he was going the other way because I was much slower than him. I remember, remember thinking, wouldn't it be amazing to be that fast? Wouldn't it be great to then be up on the podium at the end of the race? Um, and I thought, why not just give this a go and try try running? So I just, from then on, I just tried to be consistent and tried to run. At, the, at, the, at first I was running every other day. And then I started running a bit more. I changed that to every day and just got out as much as I could. Uh, and eventually I started learning more about how I should run and the types of training I should do um, and the things like interval training um, and long runs and tempo runs and all the different bits of training that I, I needed to add into my training plan to actually get faster. Um, and three years, three and a half years later, here I am having run a, a 2.24 marathon at my home marathon, the London Marathon. And I'm just super, super pleased. Six weeks before, six mu months or so before London, I ran the Yorkshire Marathon. And, and that was my first marathon. And I ran that in two hours, 28 minutes, which I, I was super pleased with my first marathon going sub 2.30 uh, at 40. Well, I was 41 then. I was really, really happy with that. Um, and then and a year ago I ran my first half marathon and I ran that in one hour nine minutes 35 seconds so again I was super super pleased with with that time for a first half marathon so I knew I had the ability to run fast I knew I thought I could put in a, a good time for a marathon so again that really motivated me to train and to train train hard for for London um, and that's what I did and I'll go through now with you some of the things that I did and some of the training I did to get the result that I did at London. I finished, by the way, I finished 33rd out of I think 45, 48,000 people so again totally happy, happy with that. The core training that I did before London was that I ran a lot of mileage I would run 100 mile weeks. Um, I didn't just start off suddenly running 100 mile weeks. I built that up over the course of the last year um, to be able to run that because I think if I suddenly went out and ran 100 mile weeks, I would just get injured. It's just impossible. But I didn't find it too hard because the best way to do that is just to run twice a day. So I'd get up really early in the morning. You know, I was getting up at five. Um, you know, I've got two young kids and um, the day with working and everything else and, and the kids is busy so I needed to get up early and get in the run early so I was getting up early um, getting a run in in the morning and and then trying to get a run in the, in the evening as well uh, and that I didn't find it too hard actually I found I, I was surprised I found it quite easy on my body um, I think breaking the runs up really helped um, 
and you can actually build mileage quite quickly by doing that and then on a, a Sunday generally a Sunday I'll do a, a long run so uh, probably a, a 30 to 35k run most weeks uh, I think having that kind of base really helped me generally the run I do in the morning would be a, a, a steady run so I was looking at something like three minutes 45 to three minutes 50 per kilometer for those runs uh, in the evening it would be an easy run so something like anything over four four minutes ten per per kilometer so for me I like running a lot of steady runs I like keeping speed in my in most of my days um, obviously I couldn't run that fast every run and adding the easy runs in the evening and some days some some days weren't I, did, could, I just couldn't do the steady runs I would end up just running easy as well in the morning because you know it takes a toll on your body when you're doing that much volume so you, you know I think one of the, the things I did was run for feel I, 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 I felt how my body felt on a certain day and ran to that so if I didn't feel like I could run faster I didn't um, if I felt like I could run fast then I would one thing I didn't do too much of in my training was interval runs I did in, in, in the four to five weeks leading up to London I did go out once a week to a track and do 10 1k repeats but really in the lead up to London for many months I didn't do any interval training and I know that's going to surprise quite a few people that I could run 224 without doing that but I found that just building up a strong base of aerobic fitness really helped me to run fast at London so I was really I was surprised I could run such a good time without doing much interval training but also it's made me think that perhaps if I did add some interval training in every week or even twice a week you know, I could really improve my time a lot more so that's something to think about for, for me for the next marathon something that I think has been really key for me in the lead up to, to London was staying consistent and I think that has really helped me to just get a great level of fitness, a really great level of base fitness for for running a marathon. I had very few rest days, which I know ne not, isn't necessarily a great thing to do either. You know, I did have some rest days when I just really felt exhausted or I just was very, very tired. But I would just make sure I got out pretty much every day, even in the winter, even in the dark, even in the cold, even when it was raining. Um, I just got out and and ran and made sure I did and I think that's part of that is just having the mental discipline to do that and that's perhaps the toughest thing there were days in January February when it was raining here it was cold it was windy and honestly the last thing I wanted to do was go out and run but I made myself do it and I'm so glad I did because I honestly think that that consistency of training really really helped me to get the, the time I did in London um, and I think even at my age you know I'm not because I'm 42 I'm not really old either but I'm not young um, and I've only started recently but I think at my age just building up that consistency because I haven't been running for years and years I think building up that consistency now has really helped me to Get that kind of fitness level and get that strong fitness that I probably didn't have before and build up that aerobic base so um, as much as anyone says you know you, you've got to do two sessions or workouts a week um, you've got to run fast and you've got to, do lots, got to do lots of intervals I've found that just being consistent and getting out is the most important thing and sometimes even if you get out just for 15 minutes is better than nothing and that sometimes that 15 minutes turns into an hour because you just you, you suddenly enjoy it but the hardest part and as I think everyone probably knows is getting out the door on those cold windy days and that's where just trying to have some mental discipline really 
really helps. For me, I just felt guilty if I didn't go out for a run. Um, and that kind of niggles at me, that guilt niggles at me if I don't go out. So I'll eventually make myself go out just because I feel guilty. Um, I've, I think that really helps me. So there are you know, these mental techniques we all have as we, as we get to sort of know ourselves better that make ourselves get out the door and go for the run. Um, and it's also, it's also really good just to have a why, why you're doing it, why you're going out for that run. I found that obviously London's a huge marathon. I've watched it my whole life. Um, having the chance to do it really helped. So for me, just having a goal in the future was key as well to making myself get out the door and making myself run, even when I didn't feel like it. I ran a practice race as well uh, about six weeks before London. And that really, it was a half marathon, and that really got me into back into the feeling of racing. I hadn't run since the Yorkshire Marathon six months before the London. I hadn't raced since the Yorkshire Marathon, so I was out of practice, and I thought I'd be okay. But actually, running the half marathon reminded me of the pain of racing and reminded me of how hard it could be um, and sometimes because I wasn't doing intervals I think that I'd forgotten that feeling of race pace uh, and so that reminded me that actually I needed to probably work on that pace um, and I think it's which is probably why I'm going to start doing intervals in the future because I think it's important to start to feel how a race feels and I probably wasn't in the best shape for that half marathon. I ran it in one hour, eight minutes, 51 I think, um, which was a PB for me, but the race didn't feel easy. It felt tough because I just wasn't used to running at a race and I wasn't used to running a race pace. So that helped me to realise okay, I needed to just add in some speed in my training in the weeks before London so that I remembered how to run fast and it wasn't such a shock to the system. I think that half marathon was, was a shock to the system for me at the time. Um, so it's important, I think, to have a race before your big goal race. Um, probably not too close. I think six weeks for me was about the right length of time. Some people might say that's too close or some people might say that's too far away. But for me, I think that it worked out perfectly having a race, a practice race six weeks before and I was running faster than my marathon pace. So that helped make marathon pace in the actual race feel a lot easier. So the marathon pace in London was obviously slower than the, marathon, than the half marathon pace in the half marathon race. So it made the marathon, especially the beginning of the marathon, feel a lot easier because I was used to that quicker pace having run that race previously. I think in my next marathon training block I'll run maybe two or three more races, probably some 10Ks um, and some half marathons just to get uh, a feel for faster running and a feel for what races feel like again. I think it's it's good to have that race feeling and know what it feels like and not for it not to be too alien. Um, having said that, you can overdo it I think and you really want to peak. For me I really wanted to peak at London so I didn't want to do too many races. So I'm gonna I'm, I'm I'm gonna hopefully try and find the balance uh, where you peak at the right time and you don't use up your London fitness on one of these other races. Um, so it's important also just to be careful, I think, I, I found, I thought just to be careful and not to overdo it as well. So the thing I'm, I'm really taking away from my training for my 224 at London is consistency. I think at 42 years old, you can't always push the limits. You can't always go out and run really fast and do lots of workouts. Um, for me, just being consistent and getting out and not pushing my body too hard, but pushing it enough that I was building fitness 
every day, you know, even by small increments, I'm sure, but just not losing it either. So once you build up a good amount of fitness, just trying to keep that fitness by getting out every day. And there's not one magic workout that makes you fast. It's just a build up of time and effort that gets you out there. So I'm going to keep being consistent um, and see what happens. But my next goal is to run 220 and sub 220. That would be absolutely unbelievable. So that's my goal for my next marathon. I'm looking into what that marathon will be. Um, so it would be absolutely unbelievable if you could follow along with me. Um, I'm going to post a lot more about my training and what I do and how I'm getting on and some of the races I do between now and I expect the next marathon will be at the end of the summer. So in one of the autumn marathons um, and yeah, just post how everything's going. So if you could like or subscribe, that'd be absolutely unbelievable. Thanks so much for watching so far. Really appreciate it. Um, thanks very much.